So you are using this cool third party library to fetch some interesting data, but as soon as you are trying to do something meaningful with it, your app crashes. This is because of a little thing called null references, which were introduced half a century ago by Tony Ho. Years later, Tony, who among other things is the winner of the Turing Prize, ended up saying this about his decision. I call it my billion dollar mistake. It had led to a lot of errors, vulnerabilities and system crashes, which have probably caused a billion dollars of pain and damage in the last 40 years. With such a small detail ending up causing so many headaches, the responsibility of fixing the problem fell in the laps of the programming language designers who had to come up with various constructs and syntactic sugar approaches to help us, the mere mortals, avoid the terrible null pointer exceptions. In this video, we'll take a look at how various popular languages are tackling and maybe still struggling to correct a bad idea introduced more than 50 years ago. We'll start by looking at a strong objective-oriented language like Java, which failed to come up with a solution for null pointers until 2014, and now, 10 years later, the solution still feels awkward and like an obvious afterthought. Then, we'll see that more modern languages such as Kotlin are able to handle this in a much more elegant manner because they were built with no safety and security in mind. Finally, we'll look at JavaScript, the black sheep of the bunch, which, as always, is all over the place and we'll see how TypeScript manages to slightly improve the situation. So, in Java, which still probably is the most popular strongly typed object-oriented programming language out there, the null handling support was a mess for a long time in the sense that there was no language support at all. The burden was placed solely on the developer's shoulders and the results were not great. Then, finally, after more than 15 years of pain, the Java devs got the optional class, a container which can hold an object or a null reference. While a step in the right direction, the optional felt, in a popular Java fashion, a bit boilerplate -y. So your code is more secure now, you can clearly outline the potential of null references, but you can easily end up with results much harder to read at the first glance. Furthermore, whenever you have a hammer, anything looks like a nail, so you could end up using optional in places such as method parameters, and the Java community doesn't really want you to do that. Ok, so Java is great, but you can see that a small decision made early on can have ill effects even 25 years later. Next, let's look at Kotlin, a popular programming language released on top of the Java runtime environment which enjoys the benefits of the language designers considering null safety from the beginning. In Kotlin, the type system clearly distinguishes between references that can hold null and those that cannot. In this example, the name variable can only hold string values and whenever I'm trying to assign a null value to it, I'll get a compilation error. As a quick side note, both Java and Kotlin are compiled languages, which means developers can leverage the intermediate compilation step to check their code for common errors or pit falls in their logic. The idea here is to impose as many checks and constraints at compile time to avoid runtime exceptions, which are problems that could appear in the wild on production and affect customers directly. Back to the code, whenever you want to work with null references in Kotlin, you have to explicitly state your decision by using a question mark in your variable declaration. By adding this small detail in the language from the beginning, a lot of opportunities to improve the development experience arise. Take for instance the safe calls operator, which allows you to safely access properties on values that could potentially point to null. Furthermore, the Defaults can be easily provided with the help of the Elvis operator, so, at the end of the day, better language design leads not only to safer code, but also to a more enjoyable development experience. Finally, let's discuss the JavaScript world, but first we need to make a distinction between null and undefined. While null references are an anomaly since they represent something that in turn contains nothing, undefined is, from a logical standpoint, a concept that makes sense in the programming world. Take for instance a method that accepts three arguments, but we are passing only the first two when the method is called. In such cases, the third argument will be, of course, not defined. JavaScript, being the ever-fascinating gem we are used to, supports of course both null and undefined. This, combined with its loosely typed system, truthy and falsy values and other flexible features, leads to production-ready code looking like this or like this. In recent iterations, the ECMAScript team did some work to improve the null references situation by adding the null coalescing operator and optional chaining in the language. However, just like Java, a bad decision early on will have an everlasting impact on the long run. JavaScript is famously controversial and some would argue that null references are just one of the many more bad design decisions made in the language. Luckily for us, TypeScript is here to help by enforcing some standards and rigors in the front-end space. To improve the null handling situation, TypeScript offers the strict null check flag, which I advise you to always use. In short, this allows you to handle null and undefined as types and, therefore, gain access to some safety at the compilation step. So here we are, 50 years after a bad decision has been made, still struggling to fight off its effects. If there is a lesson to be learned here, is that errors are human, and if Turing Prize winners can make mistakes, your code can be buggy too. So make sure to like this video and to send it over to your project manager or to your QA team next time they complain that your code caused issues or regressions. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.